Hi, my name is Paris Wolf. Today we're going to be working on our cryptography, questions 41 through 50, and I'll show you why the answer is the answer and what the other options match up with. For question 41, we're going to look at cipher feedback mode, output feedback mode, and counter mode. So for cipher feedback mode, the initialization vector is encrypted immediately, and it turns a block cipher into a self-synchronizing stream cipher. Now this key here represents something like uh, encryption algorithms such as AES, DES, triple DES, two fish. And so the initialization vector gets encrypted and then it's XORed with block one. Block one is the data. If you are interested in how it works, I have the definition here of all the steps. However, for the purposes of this course, you just have to know that the initialization is, in vector, uh, is uh, encrypted it's turned into a stream cipher and it's taking the current block output of the Zor process. <clears throat> so what that means here is that what this outputting here, there's many different um, transformations and algorithms and math going into, into uh, this output here. And a portion of this goes to cipher one. And then the output of the Zor process here is used for the initialization vector for the next block. And so they're all dependent on the previous block but it's not using the cipher one um, for the initialization vector. It's taking a certain mathematical formula and that mathematical formula for your purposes, you just have to know that it's taking the output of the Zor process. So output feedback mode, that is almost the exact same as the cipher feedback as it's taking the block cipher and turn it into a synchronous stream output but the difference is that it's taking the output from the cipher stage. And so it's just taking, um, after this initialization gets encrypted with a algorithm, it's outputting different, um, different stages of the math. And so a portion of it goes to the block one data for cipher one, and the other portion it's using that for the initialization vector for the next block of data. For the cipher mode, counter, counter mode, um, you just need to know that it turns the block cipher into a stream cipher. As you can see that the all the bl data blocks, they're not dependent on each other, they're independent. And so that's why it's saying parallel processing because a any hardware that is processing um, th this cipher mode can do it independently of each other because each of these are not dependent on each other. It keeps track with a counter. And so each block of data goes up by one number. And this nonce is a one time value. Question 42. What information protected, protection method encryption has 128, 192, or 256 bit key size and a 128 bit block size? That is AES. And we're going to take a look at the other options on here. And one thing about the block sizes and the key sizes um, is that there, there's really no special technique to remember all of this information and that you just you have to know all of these block sizes and these key sizes and you have to have understanding of these transformation rounds and, and know the majority of this um, information here. So what is a transformation round? Um, I felt like this is important because when, when you're reading the question, you should understand what it's asking here. So a transformation round is one iteration of the cryptographic algorithm or cipher processing steps. Each round involves a set of mathematical operations, substitutions, and permutations that transform the plain text into cipher text. So what does that mean? Well, when we look at something here like AES and it, the transformation round, uh, essentially, it, it's <clears throat> a ton of math and computational for each single round. So when it has 10, 12, or 14 rounds, it just makes it that much more complicated to be able to decrypt. And during the round, it has all these different mathematical uh, transformations or operation substitutions and permutations. How many transformation rounds does AES use with 192-bit key? It uses 12 rounds. So 10 would be used for 128-bit key, 
and a 256 would be 14 rounds. We'll take a look around here. As you can see, these are parallel with each other. 128, 10, 12 goes with 192, and 256 key size goes with 14. So you should definitely know that. What did NIST designate for the specification for hashing? Um, so NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and it provides guidance and recommendations um, for encryption of electronic information and how to handle data. And so for hashing, they, they uh, would recommend SHA. And for encryption, yeah, they have a few different ones, but one of the main ones they would say is the Advanced Encryption Standard, which is a... Uh, very famous and mo most popularized encryption in the United States. And I just wanted to put a few different things in here that they suggest here, such as the AES. This is the answer for hashing um, that they recommend is SHA. And there's different types of encryption, so they don't just recommend one type, but you know, RSA, elliptical curve cryptography, uh, for signatures, they recommend digital signature algorithm, and for key exchange, um, Diffie-Hellman, or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. Question 46, what is a birthday attack? Okay, so a birthday attack is a type of brute force attack based on probability to create a hash collision, and we're gonna take a look at that on the next slide. Um, AES, that's an encryption formula. SHA, remember anytime you see HA, I want you to think hashing algorithm. And a dictionary attack, that's when you uh, go through and you, you try to use all different sorts of um, possibilities or combinations as if you're actually going through a real dictionary and you're using going through a word list. A type of brute force, oh, so I just want to repeat, a birthday attack is a type of brute force attack based on probability. So the, the probability uh, scenario that they give is that if there's a set of n random people chosen in a room, they will have the same birthday. And so specifically, if they say if there's 70 people in a room together, there's a 99.99 uh, mathematical chance that two of them will have the same um, birthday, which sounds crazy, but when you go through the math, it's, very, it's true. And I wanna talk a little bit about how the hash collision works and why what, what, what is really happening with this birthday attack? So a hash collision is when we have two different inputs and they're producing the same output. So you can have one file over here that is not associated with this file over to the left. And somehow when they're put through the SHA-256 formula, or in this case, the MD5 formula, the output is the exact same. And that can be dangerous because hashing is for integrity, verification, uh, digital signatures, and password storage. And so here we have the two different file names here. Um, one thing that they could use if, if the password were hashing out to the same, they could gain unauthorized access. If the digital signatures were hashing out to the same, they could pretend to be that other person. And for data integrity, um, as far as like hash collision, why that would be an issue is if there's some sort of database and that's how they verify that none of the data has changed. And so it could be tampered with or changed and that change could go undetected. Um, and that's why hash collisions are dangerous. And so the birthday attack is um, trying to find a way to take advantage of that and, and use that to the attacker's advantage. Question 47. A list of common words and tries, each entry is known as a dictionary attack. So that's the answer there. A dictionary attack is a list of common words and tries, each entry, dictionary attack. Uh, the option factors, the prime number used within an RSA algorithm, that is talk to, talking about um, RSA factorization or simply um, factoring the modulus, which in this course you do um, do a little bit of the modulus, and that's why they teach you that is because it's a technique of breaking um, the, the RSA algorithm. And it's, in a, it's also known as integer factorization, or it's used to recover the prime numbers. Matching the hash value back to the original text, 
Um, that could be referring to like rainbow table cracking, where you have a list of um, hash files or passwords, and then you're comparing that to the database's um, hashed passwords, and you're, and you're trying to match that back to the original text. Um, looks for the rollover for the same value of initialization um, vector. That's a initialization vector um, reuse attack or initialization vector rollover attack is what that's referring to. So again, a list of common words and tries each entry is known as a dictionary attack. So what is symmetric encryption? Symmetric encryption is when they use the same key that also decrypts the data. So they're using the same formula, the same variables to, or the same key to encrypt the data that they are to use to decrypt the data over here. The public key to encrypt and the private key to decrypt, that's referring to asymmetric encryption. Um, Kerberos is a authentication server, meaning when you log into an enterprise environment, it's keeping track of your username and your password to be able to authenticate you are who you say you are. And that is uses a ticket-based system. PGP, that stands for pretty good privacy and is used for email encryption and authentication within the email. Uh, question 48 of oh, the answer, same key that encrypts and also decrypts the data. Question 49. Data that is based on groupings of 128, 192 bits is a string or block cipher. So anytime it says in groupings of bits, like 128 or 192, you automatically know that it's talking about a block cipher because blocks are groups or sets of bits. While string, that would be by one by one. And so the answer is a block cipher. Question 50. What is a symmetric string used for live stream transmission of data? So why is symmetric string used for live stream of data? So symmetric encryptions are faster than asymmetric. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is stream is also faster than block encryption. And so the reason why they would use a symmetric stream for live transmission, such as the news, is that it's it's going to be a lot faster and smoother. Um, the It signs files and encrypts that hash of the file to verify the integrity and authenticity. That's talking about a digital signature uh, or the DSA algorithm for, for signing. The encrypts and decrypts in blocks of characters at a time with a complex algorithm that is talking about a block cipher such as ECB or the cipher feedback mode or the output feedback mode.